Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Madeline, and uh, this is Nampur. And today we're going to be presenting our fourth year design project, which is called a quantum apta sensor. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So essentially, we're trying to address two main problems uh, with our with our device. So the first thing we're trying to do is put together two areas of science that are both very cutting edge, but usually have problems going together and working functionally. So we're addressing the area of nanotechnology and quantum mechanics and putting them together in a device uh, that is truly novel and unique. Um, for addressing a problem, we've chosen to make a sensor that is going to be highly sensitive with integrating those, these two technologies and we'll be able to detect any target small molecule that you want to detect in a solution. Right, so what is our design strategy? Essentially what we're doing is we have two main stars to our project. We have DNA aptamers and NV centers in diamond, which are nitrogen vacancy centers. They're a structural defect in the diamond lattice. And essentially when you put them together, you will create our platform, which is our quantum device. So, this is our main, uh, I guess, ideology for the device. And what happens is that the DNA aptamer has a structure switching ability, which allows us to bring magnetic particles close to our diamond surface. And when the magnetic particles are close to the surface, we will have a lower intensity of light that we can collect from our diamond surface. And when the particles are away, uh, farther away, we'll have a higher intensity of light from the surface. So this is the phenomena that we're trying to detect is that the lower and higher intensity from our diamond surface caused by the presence or absence of magnetic particles. So some of the primary customer requirements we are aiming to address with our design is the compactness of the design, the high sensitivity of the design, the high selectivity, and reproducible and non-biased results every time. So with respect to our first two primary customer requirements, we'll show you in a bit, and I'm sure your impressions will be, well, this device is not very compact, but we're trying to, we essentially scaled down a device that typically takes up the space of a room. It's about eight feet high and about five feet wide to a device that fits essentially in the space of this table. And the second customer requirement is high sensitivity. So we're able to detect one in a trillion particles with our, with our current setup that we have. Um, the high selectivity that we want is, uh, rises with the question that we are able to select only our target molecule in a complex media compared to other molecules that might as also be present with similar sizes. And the last thing, but not the least, that we must have with our sensor is reproducible and consistent results every time. Um, so from the conception of the design, back in November 2012, we had a lot of questions uh, that needed to be answered. And two years down the road, March 2014, we believe we have been able to answer a whole bunch of them. And we're going to take you through the process of how we went through the design and answered these questions. So we have four main design components that we have used to build our sensor. Um, those include DNA aptamers, thrombin, the NV center dope diamond, and the gadolinium. The DNA aptamers here are our structure switching aptamers, and they're basically the sensing component of our device. Structure switching aptamers are able to detect the target molecule by switching the structures in the presence and absence of the target. Thrombin is our test, uh, our test target because it is one of the very well-researched targets with a lot of information available. So that's why we use that target as our proof of concept target. And our second two, or I guess our second section of our main design components, the first one is the nitrogen vacancy center doped diamond. Nitrogen vacancy centers occur naturally in diamond. Um, but in our case, we artificially added them in. And the second, and what makes them unique is that nitrogen vacancy centers have the ability to be used for experiments of detecting single molecules to, in our case, we're detecting a, a bulk or a large range of molecules. And the second is the gadolinium, which is a magnetic particle that's commonly used for things like MRI technologies. And what the gadolinium is able to do is induce a change on the NV center, which results in a different intensity of output light. And the presence of the gadolinium is controlled by the structure switching ability of our single-stranded DNA aptamer. 
So our final design ideology is to integrate the structure switching ability of the DNA aptomers and the magic of the magnetic spectrum alteration of our NV centers and gadolinium in combination to create a novel and robust quantum aptosensor. So for our engineering design, we have divided our design for the ease of fabrication and also for the ease of this presentation into two parts. It's the biochemistry design and the quantum optics design. The goal of the biochemistry design is to attach DNA aptomers to our diamond surface. Diamond is known to be a very hard and inert surface, which makes it a complication in our case to attach DNA aptomers to the diamond. So that this was our first problem that we had to overcome to make this design even possible. Um, so here we can see that through the design flow that we had a hydrogen terminated diamond which was doped with nitrogen vacancy centers and through UV photo attachment and EDC reaction we were able to attach DNA aptomers to our diamond. Uh, then we were able to incubate a complementary DNA which had G gadolinium molecule attached to it so that we could have the gadolinium molecule close to our diamond and as soon as our target molecule thrombin will come in it will, since the DNA aptomer is more selective to thrombin compared to the partial complementary strand, it will displace the complementary strand and therefore we will be able to detect a change in the light intensity. Some of our assumptions in the, in the design that we were able to validate over time uh, were that we have uniform DNA coverage on the diamond surface the second assumption is that there is no visible or um, measurable DNA degradation through all processes. Uh, third thing, we have been successfully able to attach G gadolinium to the DNA complex. And the last but not the least is there's only one gadolinium molecule present per DNA strand. Um, now I'll take you through some of the biochemistry results we obtained in order to test our setup. So the very first um, thing we had to check is, can we attach DNA aptomers to a carboxylic acid terminated um, surface? For that, we use carboxylic acid beads supplied by Sigma Aldrich. These beads are known to have a coverage of 10,000 carboxylic acid strands per bead. Uh, surface area is much higher uh, compared to the diamond, but we still have carboxylic acid beads. We did EDC reaction, we were able to attach DNA aptomer, but well, we need to validate that. So we had a complementary DNA strand, which had a fluorophore of Alexa 48 label on it, and um, we incubated that with our beads, and we were able to obtain fluorescence under fluorescence microscopy, and therefore we were able to reach the conclusion that we are able to attach DNA aptomers to a carboxylic acid surface. Um, next point, since we can do this reaction, let's try to do it on uh, DNA on the diamond surface. So once we did this reaction on the diamond surface um, and attached the complementary DNA with Alexa 48 on the diamond surface, we were able to measure fluorescence with the fluorescence plate reader. Um, putting that through a calibration curve where the calibration curve basically relates the fluorescence measured with the DNA concentration in the sample. We were able to, in the right side of the curve, the yellow dot, we were able to find um, a DNA concentration in nanomolar range. Uh, this DNA concentration helped us back calculate the surface coverage that would be um, of the DNA aptomers on the diamond. Uh, we use different kinds of diamonds as well as different experimental techniques to optimize and maximize our DNA coverage on diamond. And we were able to obtain that we have about 10 to the power 12 um, DNA strands per centimeter squared of diamond. And for our experimental setup, that is good coverage. And therefore, it proves that we have been successfully able to attach DNA aptomers and obtain a surface coverage that could be useful. So now I'm just going to take you through the second part of our engineering design, which is the quantum optics design. So we also had a goal with the quantum optics. And essentially, our setup should be able to detect magnetic particles close to the surface of the diamond versus magnetic particles floating in free space. Because this is the metric that would be used for 
any target that you're testing. So essentially what we've done is we've separated um, the detection mechanism from the optical setup. So if you had any sort of uh, target uh, detection mechanism that involves getting your magnetic particles close to the surface or just free floating in space, our detection or our setup would be able to detect this change. So what is the star of our, of our setup? So the star of our setup is the diamond that's been doped with nitrogen vacancy centers. So our diamond we actually home grew ourselves uh, using chemical vapor deposition methods. Um, which essentially is just how diamonds are typically grown. It's very high temperature and very high pressure. Uh, and you introduce a nitrogen gas that's able to uh, essentially grow these defects in the diamond. So I can pass around our actual sample here. Um, I know you can't, it, you can't really see diamond on there, but as you can see, it's about 10 nanometers thick. So, <laughs> um, so I'd be surprised if you could. So just Moving on then, okay, so this is what um, a nitrogen vacancy center is. So essentially it involves replacing a carbon molecule in the structure with a nitrogen molecule, or my, uh, sorry, nitrogen atom, and then replacing another carbon with just a vacancy. And an NV center has a very unique energy structure, which is on the right figure here. And this figure shows that when you excite an NV with green light, you will have a red light emission. And this amount of red light emission can be changed by the presence of microwaves and the change by the presence of magnetic particles. So this, um, as I mentioned before, this is our original design flow. So I'm just gonna bring it back here to remind you. But essentially, what it involves is we have the magnetic particles close to the surface or far away from the surface caused by the presence um, or caused by the abilities of our DNA aptamers that we've attached to our diamond surface. And essentially it shows that we have a green laser coming in, hits our diamond, and then essentially we have a photo detector here that can detect the red light coming from the diamonds. So this is what our final setup actually looks like. Um, and essentially our final setup has two parts to it. It has the optical, the optical detection, uh, which consists of a laser source, um, and some filters and our photo detector, which is fed into a computer that we can, si we can process our signals with. And the second component is a microwave control circuit. So essentially, in order to process our results and get cohesive output from our detector, we need two inputs. And the first input is the green laser, and the second input is the microwaves coming from our microwave control circuit. So, this is a physical picture of our actual uh, prototype. So on the right here shows our laser hitting our sample. So you can see our sample is illuminated with green light here. And then this tube is our photo detector with some green filters or um, some green light filters into it. And on the left uh, shows our complete setup. So as you can see, it is quite compact. Um, and all those extra pieces over there consist, basically make up our entire microwave circuit, which is again the second input. So taking uh, a closer look at the microwave circuit, we have two components of our microwave circuit. The first is shown on the left, uh, which is essentially a microwave pulse generator. Um, so sends out microwaves just like the same microwaves you use in your kitchen. Um, and it works in, con in conjunction with a switch so that we can control when we're sending in the pulses, at what amplitude, at what time. And then on the right hand side, we have a resonator circuit. And what the resonator circuit's purpose is, is to deliver, is to ensure that we're actually delivering the microwaves to the diamond. And the second part is to ensure that we're delivering them at the correct frequency. So this is our experiment. Um, and essentially what we're doing is, as I mentioned, we're sending in a microwave pulse and then we're waiting, in a we're waiting a certain amount of rest time, and we repeat this many, many, many times. And while we're repeating this, our photo detector is collecting the light coming from, uh, coming from our diamond. But the end result that we're looking for is that when there's, no mic when there's no magnetic particles close to the surface, we should not see a change in the intensity that we're picking up. And if there is magnetic particles close to the surface, we should see some sort of change. And furthermore, 
we should be able to differentiate whether or not the particles are close to the surface or free floating or no particles at all. So this is actually what our results have shown. So on the right hand side are our experimental results and it's quite difficult to see our shift because we're dealing with concentrations that are so small. So it's very difficult to see with an untrained eye, which is why we've created this illustration on the left-hand side here. So I'll be explaining our results using our, our illustration. So um, I'm actually just going to walk over here. All right, so essentially the two middle peaks here show the results of having just a blank water-like solution on top of our diamond with no magnetic particles at all. And the second experiment that we ran was having a solution with free-floating magnetic particles. And the third experiment we did was having the uh, magnetic particles attached to our diamond surface via attached to our DNA aptamer. And our results did show that as you have the magnetic particles closer to the diamond surface, you will be able to see a bigger difference in the amount of intensity that you pick up. And furthermore, you actually are able to differentiate between magnetic particles close to the surface here versus magnetic particles that are just free floating in solution. So essentially we've proven that our device is fully functional and it works. So I did mention the compactness of our setup. So this is just to put a visual representation to that. So on the left here shows our setup and as you can see it fits on just a, a regular lab bench including our computer. And on the right there is a typical setup that is used to do similar uh, tests to this test that we've conducted. Uh, and as you can see, we have another picture of one of our lab mates standing beside it, but he's about the same height as me, and his head comes up to about here. So it's quite large and bulky. So we've been able to shrink that down to a size that's you know, quite portable and can be taken while well, we took it here today. So yeah, so moving on. Um. So as we've discussed with our engineering design and results, we have multiple advantages to our setup. The first being it's a compact design, as we did the size analysis right before with a focal microscope setup. We are able to detect picomolar concentrations of the target. Uh, we're not using any toxic, we're not releasing any toxic byproducts or components. And our setup is cost effective compared to the original confocal setup, which is about $200,000. And our setup, although for the purpose of this project cost $10,000, it is much less in cost and just as sensitive. So for concluding remarks, um, from the biochemistry side of things, we have been successfully able to attach our DNA aptamers to the diamond. We have good surface coverage and we have made sure that there's no DNA degradation over weeks on the diamond sample, which means that our sensor could be used over a long period of time. And with the second aspect of our project, we've been able to prove that we have a very sensitive optical detection setup. Uh, we've been able to construct, test, and uh, execute a fully functional microwave control circuit, which allows us to control any experiment that we would like to do. So we can do far more complicated um, experiments with this device. So it's still, we've proven that we can show something simple works, um, which means that something more complex would yield even more drastic results. And finally, putting the two areas of our project together, we've been able to prove that we can detect whether or not our target molecule is present close to the surface or present just free floating in space. So essentially, we've been able to prove that our device could be used for any target molecule and in doing so can be applied to things that you would need to detect very small concentration of particles. So this is things like early signs of cancer or water contamination, or you could use it to detect um, toxic gases in mine shafts or caves. You could use it for space exploration detection because they're always looking to detect very small concentrations of, of particles. Really, the applications that we have are limitless with this. So we'd just like to conclude by saying thank you for listening to our presentation and uh, we'd like to acknowledge the help of uh, Dr. Corey's group, including many of his grad students and also Dr. Ju and Lu's group and Dr. Monica Vera's group. So thank you very much and we open the floor to questions. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so fantastic amount of coverage, nice presentation, thanks. Uh, just you brought an awful lot of things together, so it's really neat. So, uh, uh, the great challenge with this is once you've got something, hey, I can detect this. The next question is, can I detect it selectively, or do I have specificity? Right. So I wasn't really convinced, or maybe I missed something, that you had tested specificity. You tested that you could see something right. when you added it, but could you see when you added something that wasn't supposed to bind, you'd right. probably still get non-specific binding. How right. How much have you tested that? So uh, we, that is our future of work. It has not been tested. Uh, as for our DNA aptamer, from the research that we've done, it's uh, a fairly specific aptamer. And we still need to test it, so I can't give you conclusive results on that, but we're hoping that the DNA aptamer is specific enough to the thrombin that it will be displacing the partially, partial complementary strand. And there's been enough research done on that specific aptamer that we're using, um, and we're hoping that we would be able to achieve that probably by the end of next term. Okay, there's right. probably going to be a need for some sort of low-level passivation uh, to right. prevent binding directly to so, so I guess the test that we have proven is that we're able to detect basically blank water. We used a PBS solution and we saw no difference. We tested our diamond just in air, so no air particulates were detected. Um, so, but essentially we've shown that you could use something like nano tweezers on the surface to detect a certain type of molecule or you could use uh, antibodies or you could use DNA aptamers, but as long as you can get the magnetic particles close or far away from the surface, that's sort of the metric that you're looking for. So it's really dependent on the biochemistry and the selectivity of the biochemistry that determines, I guess, the selectivity. And uh, what you could do, an experiment you could do, is um, test with various particles in the, I guess, in the solution, and you could sort of make a spectrum for if I get this intensity, it means that I'm detecting this particle. If I get this intensity, it's this particle. So you could functionalize more than one thing to the surface and detect for different levels of intensity. You could do something like that and be able to multiplex. Yeah. In the interest of time, we'll have to yep. move on. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you.